As you have seen from other videos, I like to paint my models in sculpt mode. In this video you will learn about the paint tools in the sculpt mode, how I use them, how to set up a workspace for ease of work, and finally we will paint together the guardian shroom, so stay tuned. What's up everyone, I'm Nemesis from Engon85, welcome to my channel. If you would like to follow along, I have included a link to download the Blender file for this model. This is a quick guide on how I paint on scope mode, so let's get to it. The paintbrush in Blender allows you to quickly add color to your models, without having to do any UV unwrapping or having to deal with the slower vertex paint mode. But of course, it has its downsides. First, you need to have a heavily subdivided mesh if you want to have a good result. Second, you cannot use the painted texture in a different software unless you unwrap the model and bake the colors into a texture. And last but not least, if you ever use programs such as Clip Studio, Photoshop or Krita, you will have expect some paint layers, but unfortunately, we still don't have anything like this available. Despite these downsides, this is a great way to give more life to your model and prepare for a quick render that you can share with your friends or post in your preferred social media, even for portfolio presentation. With this out of the way, let me show you how I use this tool and if you learn anything, please let me know in the comments. The first thing I do is to create a workspace to access before starting to paint, just to make things easier. To do this, I duplicate the sculpting workspace by right clicking on it and then duplicate. Now I can double click and rename it. Then I proceed to split my screen. For this, I drag the top corner on the left to the right. This I will be my rendering area. I like to have this since the colors may look a bit different compared to the ones in sculpt mode due to the influence of the light. I will now clean the area by pressing T to hide the tool panel. Placing my cursor on the top header menu, I can then scroll until I get to the render view. I'm using cycles for this rendering. To unclutter the space even more, I right click on the header menu and I hide it. You can get it back by pressing on the top right arrow. Having my rendering area, I can now set a place for my reference or color palette. In the editor type, I will change the outliner for the image editor. I will combine these two as I will only need the image editor. Now I can go to the image, open and navigate to where I have my reference or color palette. Having this in place, I can quickly pick colors to be added to my model. When I paint on my model, as you can see, this is not showing in my render view, so we still need to do one more thing before starting to paint, and this is to plug our colors into a material. When we paint in the object data properties, a color attribute will be generated. To make it visible, we need to plug it into a material node. For this, let's go to shading. Create a new material and let's keep it organized by giving a name to it. Now we click on add or use the hotkey shift A and in the search area we type color and look for the color attribute node. Clicking in the drop down will display our color attribute so I select it and then I plug the node to the base color in the BSDF node. Now the paint will be visible. Having my workspace set up, I can now paint, pick colors quickly, and see my end result in real time. Let's now move to the tools. The first tool we will review is the paint brush. The shortcut is to hold space, then control one. You can change this to make it easier by right clicking on the icon and assign a shortcut. Since I'm not painting all the time, I just click on the icons. On the top, we have two color swatches. The left one is the main color 
and the one on the right is the secondary color which can be accessed by pressing control. The next thing to look at is the blending mode. By default, it will be on mix, but if you want to have a similar result like the one in the render view, you might need to switch to the color mode. As you can see, this is closer to the rendered color. Like with the regular sculpting brushes, on the top you have the radius that can be quickly accessed by pressing F. and the strength, which can be accessed by pressing SHIFT F. You can also smooth by holding SHIFT. To quickly pick a color, while placing your cursor on one of the colors, press E to access the eyedropper tool. Now you can sample a color from anywhere in Blender. And of course, now that we have our color palette, this is easier for us. If you want to begin mixing colors quickly, you can position your cursor on top of an applied color and press S to sample this one. This way, you can do some sort of on-screen blending. Our next tool is the smear, which can be accessed by pressing space, control 2. This tool will pretty much blend the color under the cursor according to the direction of the stroke. This will react similar to mixing wet paint with your fingers. For a better result, it is good to reduce the strength. It is a good tool to use when you need to make transitions or simply for blending colors. I normally use a mix between the smear tool and sampling colors with the S key. The last tool to talk about is the Fill tool, and I will not go in depth because if you position your cursor on top of any of the Fill modes, you will get a tool tip with a short but good explanation of what it does. I will focus on the one I believe we all are going to use the most, which is the Fill mode. As straightforward as it is, this tool will fill an area with color. On the top, you will have your color. And again, by pressing E, you can switch it to the eyedropper tool. To the right of the color, you have the strength. And as before, by pressing Shift F, you can control this one. Having your preferred strength and color selected, to use the tool, just click and drag to the right and the area will be filled. Depending on your strength, you may need to drag a couple of times if you are looking for a more saturated color. The Fill tool is great for defining your base color. I also like to use it in combination with the mask brush. By pressing M to get to your mask brush, then masking an area of the model, and then by pressing Ctrl I, you can invert the mask. Back to my Fill tool, I can now sample a different color and click and drag to the right to apply it. Something we can do now is to remove the mask with Ctrl M and with the smear tool blend the colors. That was our last painting tool, so now we can do a quick painting on our Shroom Guardian. Before we move forward, there is a fourth tool related to painting. This is the Mask by Color tool. I will skip this one as I really don't use it and I prefer the regular masking brush. So now we can get to paint. For starters, I will turn on my symmetry to the x-axis, so I just need to paint on one side. Next, I will grab my fill tool and pick a color so I can establish my base color. At this point, I will play with the strength and different colors until I get a good base. Not too bright and not too dark. While I'm doing this, I keep paying attention to my render view to see the end result. I would like to have a green tone for the hands and parts of the forearm with a smooth gradation. For this, I will take my paint brush. Then I reduce the strength so I can have a smoother result. I pick a darker green as I would like to have a noticeable color definition. I am using a digital tablet, so with the pen I am applying less pressure as I am painting away from the hands to start making that gradation. You can now start to see the difference between the colors in sculpt mode and in the render view being influenced by the light. 
Now I will work on the legs in the same manner as for the arms. I have painted the palms, but I think they should have a different color. For this, I will position the cursor on the arms and press S to sample, and now I can bring back the color of the palms. Pressing S on top of the hands, I switch back to the darker green and start correcting the borders. I feel that the paint in the stomach is a bit too sharp, so while holding shift, I start smoothing the area. Now let's work on the hat. I position my cursor on the hat and press Alt Q to switch the mesh. And of course, when I paint this, it's not showing in the render view, but at this point, you guys know the reason, so let's fix it. Having my color attribute ready to go, I will do my base color with the fill tool. This one is too strong so let's make it a bit lighter. Okay, I think I like this one. For the bottom of the hat, I want a darker tone of red. With the forward slash, I isolate the model so I can see easier when I'm painting. I now pick the mask brush and increase the strength and start masking the bottom. With Ctrl I, I invert the mask. Navigate to the fill tool and pick a darker red color and start filling the area by dragging to the right. Now I remove the mask to appreciate the color better. With the smear tool, I can start blending the transition. Of course, the smear tool will work at its best when you are blending similar colors. The mushrooms are normally painted with spots of a lighter color, so I would like to do the same on this one. For this, with the paint brush selected, we are going to change the stroke method from space to anchor. With this method selected, we can paint by dragging to define the size of our spot. I play with the colors and strength until I get what I'm looking for. As a tip, something you may want to try is to switch between different falloffs. For example, the sphere, which is less soft on the edges, or sharp, which sharpens the center of the stroke. The strongest one is the constant. I will continue on smooth as I like the look of having an overall soft spot. As I would like this to feel random, I turn off the symmetry and start applying my dots with different sizes in different areas. I tried some dots on the body, but I was not happy about them. With the symmetry on and darker tone of red, I paint the crevices and blend the paint with the smear tool. And that's it guys, this is how I paint my models in sculpt mode. If you enjoy this content, please remember to like, share and subscribe. And as always, if you have any suggestions to improve the channel, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more content. See you!